Dr. Krause, I don't think my baby can hear. Every time a worried mother says that to me, my heart sinks. And my heart sinks because I know as a near surgeon and a hearing specialist that there may be a long and very arduous road ahead for that child and that family. So imagine that this is you or someone you love. Your baby is born normally, you take them home from the hospital, everything seems to be fine, but then you notice that your baby is not responding to sounds of the house. Something seems to be wrong, but they pass through a newborn hearing screen. So you think everything should be okay, but it, it's not okay. And what about others in developing countries who don't have access to health care? What do they do? Well, profound deafness before age two, which we refer to as prelingual deafness, is really a significant disability. If a deaf child is allowed to remain deaf, and there are no hearing interventions, then seldom will they learn to speak, seldom do they develop any abstract thinking ability, and they seldom uh, actually reach their maximum intellectual potential. We know that early intervention, early diagnosis of the hearing loss, and then early intervention really makes a world of difference to these children. We know that we can diagnose it, but we've got to discover it. Now, as parents, we give our children two things. We give our children life, and we give our children speech. And parents of deaf children have given their children life, and they try the rest of their lives to get them speech. So what is the magnitude of the problem? Hearing loss is the most common birth defect in the world. In the United States, about six children out of a thousand are born with significant hearing loss. And about three out of 100 children who are admitted to our neonatal intensive care units are or will become significantly hearing impaired. So what do we do about this? Well, because of this, these statistics, we have set up what's called universal newborn hearing screening for all babies in the United States that are born in our hospitals. But the problem with the screening is that it's very imperfect. Hospitals don't always have audiologists to do the testing. They use nurses or parents or roaming volunteers, and so the testing is often done improperly or it may be done imperfectly, and the parents may be given wrong information. Now, some babies are just born with hearing loss. Other babies have amniotic fluid behind their eardrums, and they, that takes about two weeks for that to dissipate. And so all the parents of children who have failed screening are told, bring your child back in two weeks for rescreening. Nationally, 45% of the children are never returned for rescreening. It's a following statistic. Now, worse are children who actually pass the newborn hearing screening but are significantly hearing impaired or actually very deaf. The parents are told that everything is okay, but then the parents notice that the child is not meeting normal development, developmental milestones, doesn't speak on time. And by the time the parents identify the problem, it's usually way too late. Colin is 12 years old. Colin was born with no hearing in one ear and significant hearing loss in his other ear. But Colin passed his newborn hearing screen, so his mother thought that everything was okay. But it wasn't okay. Colin didn't speak at age two. He wasn't diagnosed with his hearing impairment until age four, when he was fit with hearing aids. He was then mainstreamed into a first grade classroom, but the school system quickly took him out and put him in a classroom for intellectually disabled children. Colin is not intellectually disabled. He was hearing impaired. There is a significant difference. Colin was in the wrong classroom. This kind of tragedy happens today. Now, our system really didn't work very well for Colin, but he was fortunate that he was born in America because he did receive some services. Sadly, mothers around the world don't have early hearing screening for their babies. 
and their children are not diagnosed until they enter their school system or even later. Now, why is early identification important? Well, it's important because we can intervene. We actually have very sophisticated technology to both diagnose the deafness and to treat the deafness. So, what are those about? Well, we have sophisticated digital hearing aids and we will fit babies with the hearing aids very early, uh, even within the first month of life. If the child is profoundly deaf, we will uh, implant them with cochlear implants like you see on this picture uh, at age one. And many of these children who are implanted early will be actually on grade level by the time they are six or seven. But these interventions are great, but we have to diagnose the hearing loss. So the challenge is to develop a very simple yet elegant test for the early identification of hearing loss in babies. Elegant solutions uh, always seem simple when you know the answer. The solutions, however, often have very sophisticated technology hiding in the background. The formula, I think the formula, is to take your good idea and link it to the right technology. And there is an elegant solution to the worldwide problem of early identification of hearing loss in babies. But first, you need some background. Once upon a time, there was a very famous ear surgeon by the name of Dr. Bill House. Bill was my mentor, and he was my friend. He invented cochlear implants in 1960. He was the father of cochlear implants. And among Bill's many, many contributions to the field of otology, was a home hearing screen that he referred to as the sleeping baby hearing screen. This allowed mothers to screen their infants for hearing loss at home. And here's the basis of the test. The normally hearing newborn, aged two weeks to six months, been placed in a very quiet room, and within five minutes of falling asleep, will awaken and arouse when their mother speaks to them in a normal voice around 60 decibels. Now, the hearing impaired infant will not do that. They will not awaken or arouse. So to perform the test, the mother takes a sound level meter and places it by the baby's ear so she can see how loudly she is speaking standardized ling sounds. These sounds sound like this. A, E, O, S, SH. At around 60 to 70 decibels. Again, a normally hearing newborn will awaken and arouse and fall asleep. The hearing impaired newborn will not awaken or arouse. Very interestingly, it has to be the mother's voice to perform the test, not the father's voice or another female speaker's voice. Babies are really tuned in to hearing their mother's voices. So here's one of Bill's original videos that was filmed by Sean Goodman that demonstrates the test. E Uh, 
about two years ago, in the middle of a very busy clinical afternoon in my office. Uh, the phone call was from Bill. Uh, this was despite my wife's well-founded criticism that I let my cell phone control my life. <laughs> well, Bill was 89 years old, and I knew he was dying of late-stage cancer. But Bill loved kids. So I answered the call. And he was calling me to find out how the sleeping baby hearing test was going on the website. So I answered the call. He said, Eric, how is the sleeping baby hearing test going? And I replied, Bill, I can't get it launched. So I hung up the call, very frustrated. I was looking at my iPhone. And actually, that's when it happened. Everything changed. I had an aha moment, an epiphany. What if I took the Sleeping Baby Hearing Test and made it into the Sleeping Baby Hearing Test app, and we used the iPhone as the sound eater? Wow. Great idea. I finally linked it to the right technology. So I immediately called Bill back, and I made my plead to give, have him give me his blessing to do the app. And he did. He thought it was a great idea. And that's when my eight-month journey began. Now, unfortunately, Bill died about five months later, and he never saw the app come to fruition. So during my journey, I learned some Apple X code and some programming language. I worked with an acoustic engineer uh, in Colorado who had sample meter software and a programmer from Chicago. We finished the app in May of 2013. We then submitted it to Apple for their review process. And they're very tough. Usually takes about six months to get through their process. And they accepted our app in seven days. So now the Sleeping Baby Hearing Test app is available on the iOS platform. It runs on all of the Apple devices. Uh, and best of all, it is free, and it is available to the entire world. <laughs> now, the app tells the parents uh, about the test, how to do the test, gives them the sound level meter, a database, and what to do next after they uh, perform the test with their infant. And this shows one of the screens. And then we have this sound level meter that you see here, which we made very simple. And there's just one green button in the center to turn the meter on and off, like this. A, E, So the app is now available in English, and we have plans to translate it into multiple languages. We want to make it a little less text-dependent and more graphic. We want to permit data to be sent back to a central server for research purposes, and we want to develop an Android version. Now, what about smartphones? You could say, well, it's great to have an app, but how many people have access to smartphones around the world? Well, right now, there are six billion cell phones on the planet. Right now, 30% of them are smartphones, and by the year 2019, about five years from now, 60% uh, of them will be smartphones. And currently, 85% of people in developing countries have access to cell phones. It's an amazing statistic. But here's another statistic for you to consider. Right now, more people have cell phones in the world than toilets. <laughs> so consider this. This amazing smartphone mobile device platform that we're just now beginning to lever is just really not just for your personal purposes of making phone calls and email, photos, text, GPS, uh, etc. It is an incredibly powerful platform for reaching millions of people all around the world. Now, as you see here, many mothers in the world have never had access before to home hearing screening for their infants. In fact, they haven't had any 
screening for the rooms and said all. So with this app, they now have direct access like never before. And it's our hope and our goal that this app will help millions of families and children around the world. It is really very empowering. Just think about it. And the next time you pick up your smartphone, just imagine all of its possibilities. Now, Bill loved kids, and I love kids. And I wish that I could call Bill up now on his smartphone and say, Bill, we figured it out. We finally took a good idea and applied it to the right technology. Bill would be absolutely thrilled. And I will be thrilled if this app means that I will never have another story like Collins.